All right, welcome. So we'll do some uh, some mid back strengthening stuff for sure, and we'll um, we'll just kind of weave it into our our postures, and it will really play off nicely from what we did last week, where we were doing some muscular tone. Learning how to tone the back can uh, can really be just one of the great ways to build strength. There is just awakening the musculature and the movements needed to do that. And as I mentioned, we're going to be using a strap today. And so we can certainly work that into the whole process. All right, so please take a comfortable seat to get started. And um, we'll do a little bit of breathing to check in and center ourselves. Let's take a couple breaths. Just see what your lungs sort of naturally are looking for. They could be soft and shallow. They could be big, deep breaths. Just see where your lungs are at right now in this moment. It's like the kind of air that you're craving, the kind of breath that your body is asking for. Now allow your breath to open your posture. Allow the breathing to create more spaciousness, more length, Whatever it may be that you're feeling, how could I create more ease in my seated posture through breathing? Perhaps you think about lifting up through your crown and as you lift up through crown, you fill in that space with an inhale. Another way to influence your posture through breathing is to then exhale and just draw your belly muscles in to sort of firm up any sort of lift that you may have created. So the exhale squeezes in and the belly squeezes in. One more, see what you can discover. How can I improve my posture, my inner spaciousness through breathing or aided by breathing? Good, let's try this now. Let your head get a little bit heavy, even just lean just a few inches forward. So you feel some breath expanding into your mid back. This is an area that we're gonna focus on today, this mid back behind the uh, ribs below the shoulder blades. And you wanna expand that first, just breathing in above the kidney, mid back area. And just see if by putting the head and shoulders kind of gently hang forward, you can feel that expansion happening. Good, without hollowing that space, sort of inhale and bring yourself back upright. And don't think of that you're hinging on your spine, but rather grow your spine, lengthening out that mid-back area. This is one of the key instructions. Good, really good. Let's try it again. Just get the shoulders and the head. They're just gonna fall forward. I'm gonna even turn to the side so you can look up for a second. Let's grow aware of this area that we're, we're interested in exploring today. You're gonna take the back of your hands, you're gonna touch them to your mid back. And it's right, sort of the mid back is really defined as the floating rib and just above that. Right? So that's the kidney area and the, the base ribs there. There's a lot of lung tissue back there as well that you can breathe into. So with the hands back there, as you lean forward, you breathe. See if you get some expansion, see if you get some conscious movement. Part of building strength yogically is like, hey, is there conscious awareness there? Do those muscles engage and fire and move? After you've expanded on a couple inhales, now think that you're growing up through the back of your skull and the back of your crown, lengthening out that space rather than hinging at that space. This helps ensure that the muscles fire evenly. So if it's working, you'll notice that your shoulders will kind of naturally relax on your back. Shoulders just naturally relax as those mid back muscles engage. 
because you're not using the upper back muscles to hold the shoulders up. So let's try one more time. You're going to lean forward. This time you're just going to turn a shoulder and breathe again. Just it's a, it's a twist, but it's not a deep twist. It's enough so you can get a little bit different look at your breath. And then just give a little twist to the other direction. Not a deep twist, it's just enough to give your breath another look. And then back to center. And again, we grow up through the back of the skull, top of the crown, without hinging our spine, but rather elongating those back body muscles. Good. From here, you'll keep that. Inhale, stretch your arms to the sky, and you'll spread your palms like this. And as you spread your palms, you're going to pull, like you're trying to open a curtain above your head, and you're going to pull wide and down. So you're making sort of a circle shape with your hands. And you'll use that a little bit of resistance so you feel a muscular tone here on the side of your rib. Let's do that a couple times. You're going to inhale, reach up, pull wide, and make a circular shape as you pull down. Try to feel that there's a tone on the side of the ribs. A more like that. In, out, in, out, in. Out. Good. Take the left hand, I do solemnly swear, and I'm up to no good, and push that hand forward and then across the body. And come back. Inhale, lift up right hand, push the hand forward and then across the body. Let's do that again. Each side, left hand, forward, and then across the body. Right hand forward, and then across the body, opening up that back body. Good. Take your arms out, field goal post arms. We're going to do six rounds. You're going to pull the elbows and shoulders back as one, and you're trying to fire the lower part of the shoulder blade more than the upper. So you're pulsing one, two, three. Waking up that mid and upper back area. Five and six. Good. Relax down. Take your fingertips. Place them on the floor behind you. Go ahead and push down on the floor so your chest lifts up. As you push down on the floor, squeeze the upper arms towards each other. Almost like you're rolling your armpit open. Breathe into that space. And now try to push your shoulder blades down into your sit bones. Excellent. You should really open up the chest. And create some tone in the back. Good. Bring it back forward. Awesome. Let's just open our neck. If you want to change legs so that feels comfortable to have that feel balanced of sitting to you, go right ahead. Just going to drop your head to one side, roll it forward, and then roll it up the other side. And then we'll go back the way we came. So dropping to the second side, rolling forward, and then over to the other side. Then again, try to keep the shoulders steady, just seeing the range of motion of our neck. Really reaching the top of your crown like there was a, a searchlight on the top of your crown. You're trying to get as wide of an arc and as horizontal of an arc as you can without straining the effort in the neck. One more round. Let's just swoop that neck around. Using the muscles to stabilize. Now come back up to center. Excellent. Excellent. 
you're going to reach your arms out and stretch them out on a V shape. You're going to reach your arms out on a V shape, sort of, but lower, Jim. Like, I think it's lower from the camera angle. It's about parallel. Even though my camera maybe looks like my hands are higher, they are in fact parallel with my shoulders. Okay, you're reaching out, and you should feel that your shoulder gets broad when you do this. Now, exhale, squeeze them across. Notice my elbows are still straight, like scissors. Uh, inhale, open up, V, reaching out. Scissors, other arm on top. Don't bend your elbows. Keep reaching out, very important. Reaching out, you can re reach your chest forward a little bit here if you want. And cross again, scissor swipe. Inhale, open. Scissor swipe. And let's relax. Good. Excellent little shoulder walk. Let's come to our mats now. Tabletop pose. To open up the mid back, or just the back in general at this point, we're going to focus this in our tabletop pose. One of the beauties that I think of working with this kind of layer of detail, you can actually do all the classic poses, and it's just what you choose to emphasize. So in this tabletop, you're just going to start by sinking your ribs down. You can think that your arm bones are going into the ceiling. It's another way to think of it. You're melting your heart, as my teacher would say. Melting the heart. Good. Now push down on the mat or push down on your blocks so you feel your muscles fire. And as you push down, now try to lift your ribs up and open your throat and gaze up. So you're firing the back body muscles here. Yeah, good. And then let's melt again. Hang your spine like a complete hammock. Fire your arm muscles. And as you push down on the ground, lift your ribs up and open your throat and gaze up. Good. This is when you lift up, your, your shoulders will broaden. Hang like a hammock. Melt your heart. Melt your head. Hang your head. Fire the arms. Push them down to the ground and then lift the ribs, lift the throat, lift the gaze. Awesome. One more time. Hang and melt like the way a cow stands in the fields. Fire the arms. This isn't really cat pose today. We're doing a different variation. You're pushing. Push down at the heel of your hand a little more. Try to even push the mat forward with your hands. That will fire the mid-back when you try to push forward with your hand. Awesome. Good. Let's step back. Downward facing dog. Keep trying to push the heel of your hand forward. That keeps the mid-back engaging. Breathe deep. Good. Let's come back down to kneeling. Separate the knees nice and wide. We'll come down onto our elbows, a child's pose with wide knees. In your wide knee child's pose, you can put your elbows kind of under the shoulders and again, melt your heart. The more movement and fluidity our, our ribs and shoulders have, the easier it will be to build strength in our mid back. Good. Place the hand down in front. Draw the body forward. Let's drop our pelvis into the floor and rest our belly on the mat. Go ahead. Spread your hands as broad and as brightly as you can under your shoulders, really stretching the skin of the palm even. Good. Engage the mid-back to lift yourself up. Hold it here and breathe. To see if you're engaging your back muscles, see if you can lift your hands off the ground. You shouldn't lower at all. That will let you know that it was your back muscles that lifted you. Good, if it's available and a block is nearby, grab a block and slide it just one inch off the ground, keeping your back and chest lifted. 
Good. Rest on the mat. You'll slide that black, uh, that block straight in front um, of you next time. Good. Let's place those hands under our shoulders and spread the skin of our palm as brightly as we can. Before we lift up, keep spreading the hand, and that'll help your shoulder blades engage into your low thumb mid back. Now use that mid back area to lift up. And you can kind of think of it like a diamond shape almost from the shoulder blades to the side rib to where it becomes your low back. It's like a diamond shape of muscular engagement. From here, you can lift the hand and see if you lower any. Now, depending on where your block is, you might reach and go get your block or slide it once again. One inch without lowering off the ground. And then bring the block back to you before resting. Okay, last little mid-back warm-up. Let's make sure we got that block right in front of our crown. We're doing the same exact exercise. Spread the palm. This is so vital to this exercise. It creates the muscular tone into the back. Spread the palm, and then use that mid-back to lift yourself up so that you can test it by hovering the hands. Then grab the block and slide it forward without lowering the torso. Bring it back, lower down, let's press up and back, child's pose again. Knees can be a little closer together this round. Okay, so we've been opening the hip a little bit, but just to make sure we have a balanced warm up here, let's come back to a tabletop. I'm gonna use blocks, because it's gonna give my body a little more space to warm up my hip flexors and my core. So in my tabletop, you'll go ahead and step your left foot back so the toe touches the ground. And we're just gonna draw that knee in and then extend it back. So from that left toe, pull it into the body, you look at the knee, and then step it back. Pull it into the body, and then step it back. Here we go, keep going. Three, you can keep that toe in the air the whole time or touch the floor as you step back. Four, five, as you step back, you inhale. As you pull in, six, exhale, inhale back. Seven, and last one, exhale in, eight, and return to tabletop. Same thing with the other leg. Step the toe back. On the exhale, you pull the knee forward. One, two, three. I feel that core warming up. Four, five, six. Seven and eight. Good. Back to center. Open your left knee out wide and draw a circle with that knee as big as you can and place it back down. Open the right knee out wide. Draw a circle as big as you can and place it back down. Let's go back and forth. Left knee, circle, down, right knee. Circle, down. One more time, left knee, circle, down. Right knee, circle, down. Awesome, press back, downward facing dog. Try to stretch your calf by letting the heels grow heavy.
open your feet as wide as your yoga mat. Press your hands down and sort of start to squeeze the arms towards each other so the muscles fire. Now, today, push your heart towards your uh, thumbs. This will tone the mid back. Keep that tone and pull your hips away from your heart, away from your crown. Good. Go ahead, step your left shin forward. It's not really pigeon because it's much more narrow, but it is, it is like pigeon. Your left shin is, I'm sorry, your left shin is forward, but it's narrow. And you're going to walk the other leg back. Open up that hip flexor. Let's stay up today. Breathe here. And on the exhale, pull your belly muscles in. That's it. To fire the mid back, the cue today is to press your heel of your hand down and slide, or try to slide, the hands forward. That engages the mid-back. It'll sort of feel like you're lifting your chest up. You press the heel of the hand down and slide it forward. Good, tuck the toes. Let's step back to three-legged dog. Put that left leg all the way up in the sky. We're gonna hold it for three breath counts. And let's replace that leg back down. Nice wide stance. When you're ready, you're going to bring your uh, right shin straight forward, a little bit of an angle. And then walk the other leg back. We're practicing an upright, narrow pigeon. Another way to feel that action a little more is not to keep the hands pointed forward, but to actually turn them out just slightly. So you can press the heel of the hand down and again, slide forward. This fires the mid-back muscles, allows you to open up your chest. Pull the belly muscles in a little bit on the exhale, support that inner posture. So the back is not doing all the work, the core and the back Muscle, really the abdominals and the back muscles work together. Technically, you could probably define it all as the core. Tuck the toes and let's step the right leg back. Some people like to think of the core really as just like the abdominal, so I like the crunch type muscles. But it is the back body as well. Three breaths total. And then let's come on down with that foot. You're going to walk your feet about halfway forward. You're going to shift your weight back into those feet. Forward bend. Inhale, come on up to standing. Okay, nice little warm up here. If you don't have it already, please go grab yourself your strap now. And um, if you don't own a strap, or you'll probably have your strap at this point, but other things that work are like a towel. I guess an extension cord, just you know, not plugged in. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna hold that strap out in front of your shoulder height. I've got mine doubled up. It makes it a little bit easier. And you're about shoulders width. You're gonna squeeze and pull the strap. This fires the back body muscles. Okay, pull your core in. You can check even in your camera if you have a mirror that your spine is nice and upright. This pulling apart is gonna help, again, tone the back body. And as you do this, you lift up, but don't let the spine hinge. Don't let the spine hinge. Good, as high as you can go, that's comfortable for both shoulders. And now start to pull your elbows directly away from each other. So they're coming down, yes, like that. If they get behind your head, great. If they land on your head with the strap or in front, that's fine too. Push back up. 
and bring back out in front. So you got to keep, you got to maintain that pulling apart of the strap the whole time. Mountain pose legs. If you're worried that you are in fact swinging your ribs forward, a great way to practice this is against the wall with your butt and shoulders against the wall the whole time. You'll be able to feel if you're bowing your mid back. Let's try again. Hold the strap mid height, squeeze and pull it apart. Take a moment, lengthen your crown like we did in the opening. Firm up at the core and the mid back. And now keep the mid back stable as you lift the arms up. Good. The key is the stability in the mid line, mid area of the body. Now, once you're at that edge, you'll pull and open the elbows down and away. Good. Keep pulling on the strap. If it was too easy, it means you weren't pulling with enough energy to tone the arms, to create resistance. Let's reach it back up. Just keep pulling, stay strong, friends, and then bring it back down. Awesome, awesome. Let's go ahead and take a long stance back with your right foot. You'll keep both legs straight today. And you're gonna open the strap halfway. Well, what would be probably maybe three feet, I think, is what we're looking for. Three, four feet, so that you can have a nice wide gate with the arms, much wider than your shoulders. Okay, so here we're gonna first pull on the strap above our head and twist our spine. Think of your spine like a barber shop pull. And as you pull with the strap, you twist like a twisting barber shop pull. Good, let's, let's keep the stance. Let's twist the other way. It's okay if the hips open a little bit, but not too much. Good, let's come back to neutral, facing the front of the mat, and you're gonna slide the strap along a ledge. Yes, like your hands were touching the ceiling and you were just sliding the strap along the ledge. So we're not bowing today. Rather, we're keeping our back body engaged. We're never rounding yet to keep the back body engaged. Keep breathing with me, two. Another one, three. Really pressing down with the feet for stability. Fourth breath. Last breath. Hopefully not your last breath, but the one of this pose. And come back up. Good. This, now pull with your left arm so your right arm bends. I'm just getting a stretch on that tricep. Keep engaging the legs. A little more activity here in that calf. Let's just get the other side in. Extend and pull down so you get a tricep stretch in the left arm. And then go ahead and step out of your pose. Good job. If you're firing the muscles, you should feel very loose and engaged just from firing the muscles properly, like we worked on last week. Place the right foot down, take a big old step back with our left. Nice and long stance. We're going to keep our legs straight today, or at least in this version of the pose, pushing down through our feet. Good. When you're ready, you're going to pull on that strap, lift it straight up over your head. The resistance must be maintained the whole time, so you have to feel in your body what is too much effort, what is too little effort. Find the amount of effort that can be sustained. Then twist, spiral your spine like a barbershop pole, returning toward the front leg, which is your right, I think. And then we're barbershop pole, pole spiral to the left. It's okay to open the hip a little here. Let's come back to neutral, pull, engage, and just start to hinge enough like you're sliding the strap along a flat ceiling so that we aren't really bowing into the pose, but rather just hoisting out so the core and the back muscles have to fire to hold you up. 
really nice friends. Good, now one last bit, try to pull and open the top of your shoulder away from your ears. Yeah, inhale, back up. Step out of pose. Okay, so I'm gonna to come to the camera so you can see what I mean by open the top of the shoulder. When we're, when we're pulling the strap, one thing that can happen when we're pulling the strap is the shoulders turn in. And if you keep doing it, you see how my thumbs go forward and my knuckles go out. You all try that. As I, my shoulders go up and I'm closing the distance between my ear and shoulder and I'm scrunching. That means I'm using my upper back muscles, the upper shoulder muscles. Can you feel that? The way that we want to work is as we're reaching the strap, is we want to go the other way. See, you can actually see it in my body. As I pull, as I rotate the pinky edge forward and the thumb edge back, you can see how it drops and makes space. That's the upper and mid back muscles firing, pulling the shoulder blades off of the ears. Okay, elbows gotta stay straight. So we're gonna do that at the edge of the pose. All right, here we go again. Let's step our um, left foot back. This time you're gonna do this in warrior one. So you will bend your front knee, maybe over the heel. And we'll explore again. Let's lift that strap up. Take a deep breath. Pulling on the strap. Let's give ourselves a twist. Let's give ourselves a twist the other direction. Kind of like it's becoming a warrior two a little bit. Good, now let's come back to neutral. And we're gonna slide the hands along a ceiling so we're not rounding our back. And you're pulling on the strap. And now here's your moment to shine. Bring the pinky edge forward to bring those shoulders off and away from the ears. Good, hold it, breathe. Let that upper back and core and mid back get strong, connected integrated. Inhale, back up, reach those hands back as far as they'll go, and step out of your pose, rest. Good. If you need a quick sip of water, go ahead. Otherwise, just rest the body in your Tadasana. You can rest your hands. Try not to move them. You're going to get a big surge of fresh blood after all that toning. Okay, bringing as much of our mind as we did to round one to the second side, you'll step the left foot back. And this time bend the knee into your warrior one stance. As you're ready, you'll bring the strap up and start to engage by tearing the mat, sorry, tearing the strap in two. We're trying to at least. Keeping the barbershop pole, let's twist to our right or your right. And then I'll twist. We'll twist to the other side. Kind of looks like a warrior two. And we'll come back to our neutral. And you're gonna slide, by keep pulling on the strap, slide it along this imaginary ceiling so it doesn't drop. Good, stay up. Keep pulling. Now use that engagement and wrap the pinky edge, the outer edge of the arms forward, the inner edge of the arms back to fire your mid back. Good, breathe here, stay with it. Inhale, back up. Hold me back, reaching back, and let's step out of our pose. Awesome work. And toss that strap to the side for a moment. Let's just re-engage our core as we build so much back strength here. You're gonna bring the knees a little closer together, feet a little closer together, and then go ahead and bend them. Placing the hands on the knees. As you place your hands on your knees, shift your belly muscles back. Make your low back nice and long, not rounded. Make your low back long. Breathe there. Good, just to make sure we're really stable in our low back. 
All right, that's not doing. We're going to come down to the hands on the mat, and you're going to step back to a plank pose, trying to keep that low back nice and long. Send your sit bones towards your heels. And breathe into that fullness in your back, like we talked about earlier, that the breath needs to be able to move into that mid-back area. Slowly bend your knees halfway towards the floor, but hold the pose. Stay with me. That low back needs to get a little longer. Some of you are starting to dip a little bit. Lift it up, send it back, send the sit bones back. Let's go hovering the knees just one inch off the ground. You're almost there. And touch the floor with the knees. Awesome. Breathe here. Gently start to round the back. Slowly. Just provide some counter movement to what we just worked on. Good. Inhale, come over your blocks or over the um, hands with your shoulders. You can keep your knees down for this one because I really want us to concentrate on our mid-back strength. So what you're going to do is you're going to rotate, fingers point forward, but rotate the eye of the elbow to point forward as well. Good. Now walk your knees back a little bit behind your hips. A little bit further. Yeah, that's good. Firm up the belly, lengthen the low back, and let's do a push-up. One. Good. Try to keep those elbows against your ribs the whole time. Notice in the camera, make sure those ribs aren't, the elbows aren't going out, but rather they are staying in against your ribs. This will keep the mid-back firing. Two. Good. Three. Kathy, you got to pull that belly muscle in more and kind of, there, that's the back being flat. Try not to lose that as you go down. Five. Elbows in. Jim, elbows, hug them against your body. It's going to be a lot easier. Six. I don't know, how many more do you think we need? Seven? Seven more? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Last one. Eight. Here we go. Best one yet. Elbows in. Back steady. And push up. And let's go back to a rest pose, child shape. Good job, everyone. When those mid-back muscles aren't firing, the traps the, up at the top, there are sort of, another diamond-shaped looking muscle from the neck to the top of the shoulder to the mid-back. That starts to do the job that the mid-back muscle should be doing. And that's why we get that sort of that rounded upper back, a lot of neck pain often, headaches I think, can all be caused from this muscular imbalance, asking one muscle group to do the job of another. Good. When you're ready, let's come back up. Downward facing dog pose. Let's breathe long and deep. Now let's practice pulling the knee in just to the core. So you can get from downward dog, just pull your left knee in and step it back. Right knee in and step it back. So the core fires left. Right, good, two more rounds. At your own pace with your breath. Good. Once you finish both rounds, push back and then walk it forward, forward bend. Go ahead, turn the heels in and the toes out and let's go to squat, dropping the hips to the height of the knee or lower. You bring your hands together Breathe here. Let's go ahead and push down through our legs, rise up. 
Take your left hand to your neck, and so I'm returning to your skull to release the neck as you let the head fall to the, to the left. Let's go ahead and let's work the other side. Okay. So see if you can balance today. Do the best you can to drink because it's a little bit faster paced balancing pose. See so if you can balance it. You're going to inhale and lift up your left knee and you're gonna squeeze it with both hands to your right shoulder. Do this the best you can. You're gonna pull the knee up and then across and then lower it down. So one movement, pull the opposite knee up and then across and then release it down. Try to stay balanced, try to stay rooted in your core. Knee up and across and then down. Knee up and then across and then down. Pulling as much as you can, just listening to the hip joint. Try to open up the low back a little bit, open up the hip. Good, one more time, each side, see if you can find a rhythm where you stay balanced and in a steady motion. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Let's go ahead, let's take a big old step back again with the right foot. This time you're gonna open your arms out, warrior two, and bend the front knee. Good. To fire the mid back, you're gonna lower the hands, you're gonna lower the pinky edge, and then pull the pinky edge back slow, like you're doing a karate chop, back on an angle, and that'll tone the bottom of the shoulder blades into the back. Good. Notice how the ribs and body want to go forward. Keep that. Keep it steady. Good. Now keep karate chopping, almost like you're going to try to get the pinky edges of your hands to touch each other and really open up the front body. Open up the top of the chest. Looks really good. Excellent, everyone. Keep bending that front knee. Inhale, arms up to the sky. Bring them together and straighten your legs. Excellent. As you straighten your legs, hinge at your hips. As you're going to sort of bow, or you're really turned, but you're hanging out over the front leg. So it's like a trikonasana with your arms over your head. Good. You don't have to go as far. There's plenty available to feel, to be with, to balance. Good, now square your body, turn your body to the front edge of your mat, reach out in front. You can put your hands on blocks or on the floor. And then we're gonna lift our back leg high into the sky, standing splits. If it's available in your practice, you let your head hang and sort of bring your chin into your chest. Good. Drop that leg down, and let's come on up. Beautiful. Good work. That last pose again, just to sort of counter what we had done. You're going to step your right leg, no, right leg forward, left leg back. It's our second side. Find your little bit longer stance, so a little closed. And then bend the front knee into warrior two legs. You can do warrior two arms. But today, you're gonna angle the pinky edge down and then move down on a diagonal just a little bit to start to fire the mid back muscles. So down on a diagonal, like your hand was a sword carving through the air. Breathe, steady the pose. And then we're going to go down even further, almost like we're going to think about merging our pinky edges together. I don't, I don't know, never going to happen for me. I don't know, maybe it'll happen for you. And this way, as you keep bringing down on that diagonal, 
It'll open the chest even more, really the top of the heart area. Toning that back body. Almost through, stay with it, keep breathing. Inhale, arms up to the sky, join them together with the, at the hands and straighten your legs. And then you're gonna tilt out over the front leg, like almost triangle pose. Better to keep the back engaged than go all the way into it. Turn the body, and you're gonna drop your hands to the front of your mat or maybe onto blocks. You can bend your knee. And then one big move, you're gonna shift and lift the back leg up. Hang the skull, maybe even tuck the chin to open the mid back body. Go ahead and lower that down. Awesome. Bend your knees, inhale, come up. Once again, find a, uh, once again, find a block associating with when, when we held the strap. Similar exercise, you're gonna hold the block like this. Okay. If you wanna drink tea, practice your tea drinking skills. Thank you. Just kidding. I think he absolutely has to hold the block. <laughs> it does help. You can hold the block up all the make all the digits. You're gonna bring the block over your head in the mount. Pull, try to tear the block apart. Pressing the fingertips in. Ooh, this will open up your back. Tone the back body. As you pull on the block, try to open your chest up. Look up. Breathe. Good. Now step wide into horse stance. Bend your knees a little bit into your horse stance and keep pulling on that block. Excellent. Straighten your legs. Push the block straight into the ceiling, straightening the elbows. Good. Nice and slow. Let's pull on the block. Bend the knees deep. And stretch all the way up. You can feel that back body engaging here. Let's pull on the block another round, pulling it down as you sink down. Belly muscles in, sit bones go down, down into the earth. Reach them up. Keep going, folks. Stay with me. Here we go. Another round. Pull on the block, all 10 digits of the fingers. Pulling the shoulder blades away from the ears. Let's reach up. Last one, try to draw those shoulder blades away from the ears as you bend the elbows deep. Awesome work. Come back up. Spin those heels out and bow forward. You can hang your body. You can be on blocks, on a bolster, on the floor with your hands. And let's let that upper back, mid back release. Just be with the breath. Use the breath to recover energy. Try to gather your mind into the moment. Staying where you are, just go ahead and bend the right knee very deeply. Bend your left knee deeply. Come back to center. Let's press up into a flat back position. So you can come up on your fingertips, 
on that block, on a coffee table, whatever it works, but we'll, let's do be on our fingertips for support. So we have enough time, enough height to engage the back. Good, push down with your fingertips. Keep that. Now see if you can maintain that engagement. And let's get the heel of our hand onto that surface. Be careful, don't fall. But you're going to push the heel down, heel of the hand, down and forward. So for me, my blocks start to come up a little bit. So please be careful. But when you do that sliding forward action, this tones the mid back. You should feel that engagement there. Breathe, and as you push that forward, now let's press our inner thighs and our thigh bones the other way, counter. Good, breathing. Now let's see if you can use that back body. Inhale, come all the way up. And let's step out of our pose. Excellent work, excellent work. So we will do a little bit of Balancing work now. Um, so if you want to use the wall, go go ahead and use the wall. Our first pose will be to bring up our left shin. So you might um, whatever side you'd like for the wall. I'm just gonna hold the shin up. And then if it suits you, you can hook it into the uh, hip flexor or place it on the thigh and do a standing pigeon posture. Bring the belly muscles in and back, and then bring the sit bones down to so a nice long, low back in this pose. Yeah, good. Breathing. Inhale up. Let's come out of that shape. Move to our second side, maybe turning to use the other wall, other side. As you bring up your right shin, just being with the holding version first, standing and holding the leg. I was remembering to breathe and stay with your breath. Almost like the breath sets a tone, a tone for your pace of moving, movement. It sets a tone for the effort in a movement. And start to hook the Leg on top of the standing leg and sit down a little bit. Concentrate on bringing the belly muscles towards the low back, lengthening the low back, and then sense your sit bones down towards the earth. Breathe there, but keep those belly muscles folding into the core. Inhale back up and release. Nice work, nice work. Let's just release the quadricep. I think it works best to have the wall in front of you if you're using the wall for this. And you'll go ahead and lift your left leg up and hold the ankle or foot behind you. Let's just rest it there today. Again, the hand on the wall. Just gonna rest it there today. If you get no stretch whatsoever, just holding it, you'll pull the foot towards the butt, towards the outer, outer hip on that side. We're just going to stay here for a moment and let's work on being long. And now roll. If you don't use need the wall, you can work on rolling both arms back. So you're squeezing in the mid back area. You've got your hand on the wall. You still can do it. But it's going to feel like you're pulling yourself away from the wall. You're wrapping the arms back to tone the mid back. Yeah. Now, if you want, you can sort of lean forward or kick the leg just a little. It can be a lot here. And let's release down. Good job. Second side, so that left foot will plant, 
the right side will come up. We start by just standing and holding that lifted foot ankle. You want more, if there's no stretch there, you do pull the heel towards the outer glute of the right hip. If you've been active, you probably have a stretch just by holding, just being able to hold the foot will stretch that quad. If you've done a lot of walking or running or something, a lot of movement. Okay, taking a moment to consciously bring the core in. We're not bowing ourselves yet. And then, but do in fact draw the arms back behind you to fire that mid back. If you can keep and sustain that, you can start to, yeah, you can hold with both hands. I like that. That definitely fires the back. Then you can start to kick and or lean into the pose. The only issue with holding with both feet, holding with both hands, is that you sometimes can hide or mask the back body tone because now you've held on. It's the same thing when we did the uh, cobra, right? We lifted our hands away from the floor Make sure our upper back is engaged. Good, and release. Let's come back to center. Let's let the head and shoulders grow heavy again in a wide, you know, sh shoulders or hips distance apart stance. Breathe into that back area. Send your sit bones towards the floor. And let's just start to slowly bend your legs. Almost like you're sliding your back down a wall. Good. You can just pause there. Let the shoulders and head be heavy. Do you really feel the belly muscles sort of coming in to support? Drop a little bit lower. You, I can let my heels come up, but I can still go down the wall. Go as low as you like in this version of the pose, this variation. And let your hands come to the floor. We're going to lean forward. If you want to try crow, you can. I'm just going to lean forward and let this be a hip opener, opening up my back from uh, all that toning we did. And from here, you step the feet back, come down to your knees, but do in fact cross your ankles and then sit back. Scooting back. You're going to draw your belly muscles back, starting to round your low back as your head grows heavy in front of you. Breathe. And you're going to go ahead and lift the knees up. Sink back a little further. Keep breathing. Try to get those shoulders away from the ears. And sink back a little bit lower, maybe float the feet. And then lie on the back. You can support your head. Now let's put our toes in the air, arms in the air. You can just shake it out for a second. Feel what's good in the ankles and wrists. Okay, let's settle down. Let's let the arms fall overhead, so to the floor over your head. And you're going to bike pedal with your legs, nice and slow. Bike pedal with your legs, nice and slow. Keep breathing, folks. Good. Let the knees be bent, just letting the legs float in the air. And then drop the feet to the floor. Let the knees fall open.
So your arms and your legs are look like they're in a mirror. Your hands are touching or near touching above your head, and the feet are touching below your hips. Once you've sort of created that, you know, double diamond shape, keep that in the legs and really try to soften your belly so that your low back is on the mat as well as your shoulders and your hips. Once you've got your whole spine on the mat, straighten your elbows so the backs of your hands are still on the ground, but the arms are extended. Good. Now press the top of your head down into the floor and pull your shoulders away from your ears. Do it again. Press the top of your head down to the mat and pull your shoulders away from your ears. Good. Notice if your low back came up. If it did, try to lower it again so that you have both the shoulders away from the ears and your low back on the mat. Make fists with your hands and turn so the pinky edge of the fist is in the sky and the thumb edge is on the floor. Good. Press your head down and draw your shoulders away from your ears. Now reach your knuckles away from your knees. Breathe. What happened to your low back? Good. Inhale, bring your arms back up into the sky. Stretch them, grow your arms like tree trunks so those shoulders get nice and broad on your back. Keep reaching those fingers as high into the sky as they'll go. And then rest them on your lap, or I'm sorry, on your belly. We're gonna practice a shoulder stand. If you don't know shoulder stand, you've never been really sort of worked on it, you can, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take two blocks and you're gonna put your hips on the blocks and you're gonna put your legs in the air. And this is gonna sort of simulate some of the shoulder stand action um, this way. And we'll be there for, you know, five to 10 deep breaths. So two blocks, hips on the blocks, and then you'll go up. If you know shoulder stand, you're gonna scoot forward, you're gonna rock back, and you're gonna support your mid and low back with your hands. Kind of walk your elbows in and lift your legs up, shoulders down. Try to turn your neck when you're in this position. Think of your head and your two shoulders as a triangle. See yeah, how we're doing here. Looks good. I mean, you can go up higher with your legs if you'd like. It might be actually a little easier towards the ceiling. Then, there you go. So, John, if you can't support your low back, if there's no prop under you, there you go. You can even like hold your hips, hold your pants with the hands. There you go. That's it. Perfect. Everyone just keep breathing. Try to down regulate your nervous system.
if you decided not to count and just wait for me, you can start to slowly roll down or remove the blocks and then roll down. Take your time and no rush. Put the right leg out and take the left leg up and then across for a twist. Back to center, let's change legs. Back to center. One more time, knees into the chest. Roll the forehead up, lengthen your back. And then try to keep that low back down as your hips, shoulders, and skull comes into the earth. And slide your feet out. Stretch your arms out. Make sure you've got space. Let's rest the body here.
stretch your body. Press on up to a comfortable seat. Thanks. Namaste.